What's up? Honor Hermit 26 here to give you my 14th Q&A. If you'd like to send me a Q&A question, please do not hesitate to, to do, please do not hesitate to do so. Go into my inbox, send me a personal message, uh, pro wrestling, sports, many questions you want. You guys know the drill. Um, I'm going to Extreme Rules and uh, tomorrow. Can't wait. And I have uh, actually my high school senior prom tonight. So, and I'm basically being bored all day. So I actually get a Q&A out of the way because I actually have a ton of questions to have. I like. Most I've ever had that I've answered like at one time. I'm going through my now. There's at least 20 or 30 here. Actually, it's probably closer to 30, 35 in there. So if I, I don't answer your question, I'm sorry. I just got to go in order that I got them. I think that's the fair way to do it. And there were questions from previous Q and A's where I haven't answered yet. So I'm gonna get one, two, couple of those now. All right, first from Emperor Sub Two. Hopefully, I'm saying that right. Would these two matches work in real life? Cole Cabana versus MVP and Kenny Omega versus Hernandez. Um, okay, Cole Cabana MVP probably would be a comedy match of sorts. Um, their styles really wouldn't work all that well together. I think they could put on an okay, okay match or a good match, but not anything close to the four-star level. Um, they probably would do like some comedy spot. MVP probably would be the heel if they were to book this match, and Coco Band be the face, basically do his comedy stuff, and that would be that. And then Kenny Omega versus Hernandez, they'd probably do like a small man versus a big man match in the in the sense that Hernandez would just try and do power moves to Kenny Omega, and Kenny Omega would just duck and chase Hernandez, and probably they they do some like Kenny Omega really strength moves. Maybe he tease the um, what's, what's the move called? Quartz Raft. But you probably couldn't do it on Hernandez. I don't know why you probably couldn't do it. But And probably the winners of those matches, if I were booking them, would be Cole Cabana and Hernandez. So, there's that. First of the four from Pads Chargers 2009. Who in New Japan Pro Wrestling would you like to see go to WWE? Well, my favorite New Japan wrestler by far is Oroki Goto. Uh, and I think he worked fine in WWE. He, he has, um, he has size, which WWE likes. He has a good look. He is a very, very underrated and a very great in-ring wrestler. And he just has the total package. No offense to Lex Luger or anything like that. But he just has the total package. I don't know why he hasn't been seen by WWE right now. Or He should, probably should be in Noah. He, his style was a little better in Noah than New Japan, in my opinion. But I, I love having him in New Japan and a big role in New Japan, I might add. So I'd say Hiroki Goto for that question. But I think Tanahashi could work. Maybe could work as well. Uh, but I guess Yoshitatsu, who, Yoshitatsu, whose name is, I think, now Fumi Yamamoto in real life, uh, is a former New Japan guy. So, there's that. Uh, again, from Pads Charger 2009, who is the better wrestler, Shinsuke Nakamura or Hiroshi Tanahashi? I'm going to say Hiroshi Tanahashi here. I'm not the biggest Nakamura fan. I think he's good, but he's not great. But I think Tanahashi is great. I think he can put on great matches with pretty much the majority of the New Japan roster. Um, and he's shown he can put on great matches with wrestlers from other promotions, like at Wrestle Kingdom 4, did it with Go Shiozaki. did it in the past with AJ Styles. He's just put on great matches with everybody. I just think he's a better all-around wrestler, even though Nakamura is more of a heavyweight champion type looking wrestler than Tanahashi is. All right, from all right again from uh, Paz Charger 2009, who is your favorite pro wrestling Noah wrestler and why? My favorite is Go Shiozaki. I love Go Shiozaki, but he's probably not my favorite. Um, there are a couple more guys that I like more than him. I like Kenta, even though he's injured right now. I like Mara Fuji more than him. Uh, I I'm just a huge fan of the entire Noah Jr. division. I think that's just an excellent, excellent division. It's probably my favorite. If I had to pick like, one like subsection of a promotion to watch, it probably would be the Noah Jr. division, because I just love that division. It's it's so stacked from top to bottom. Nakajima's in that division. Sometimes they use Liger. They got Kanmaru. They got Ishimori. Just that entire division, I just love that entire division. But if I had to choose one guy, probably would be Kenta. Uh, I just love watching him wrestle. Um, all right, and final question. Which ROH superstar should go to WWE or TNA? Um, TNA and ROH got... TNA and WWE, especially in 2009, got raided. Raided Ring of Honor roster. They got rid of Danielson, McGinnis, the Young Bucks, uh couple other people um, that were working there, but not necessarily, um, I think. Um, who's someone else that should go? I know Chris here was rumored to go there, but I think it, he needs to stay in Ring of Honor. I, I think his style will, like, will work a lot better. Claudio, I think he needs a couple more. I think he needs to finish out this Kings of Wrestling thing before he can go to WWE. The Briscoes, I mean, the Briscoes have kind of run their course in Ring of Honor, in my opinion. I mean, they're great to have around. They're an awesome tag team, but I think the Briscoes should go to WWE or TNA. I mean, what else can they do in Ring of Honor? It's just my opinion, but they are one of the few people left that were on the first show, and they would mention this on the Big Bang. It's like them, Paul Turner, 
and who used to be a lot chubbier. I, I watched the Air Bomber begins a couple days ago. He used to be a lot chubbier and Prince Nana. And that's pretty much it. Oh, and the merchandise guy. You'd recognize me if you've been to a Ring of Honor live show. All right. Again from Emperor Sub 2. I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong again. What do you think of Rashi Brown? I think his promos are intense. And do you like think guys like him, Brody Lee, and Bison Smith are what ROH should be going after for the sake of public expansion? Cornette himself had faith in guys like Matt Morgan and Brock Lesnar when they were in OBW. So maybe it's possible for consideration. I think it is actually possible for consideration in that... Um, Ring Honor really didn't have until Pierce came along, like a big guy on the roster. Uh, and I think Rashi Brown is a great big guy. Uh, and I, because they brought in Rashi Brown, I don't know why they haven't brought in his tag team partner, Keith Walker. Especially because Keith Walker is now working for Noah a little bit more. He was tagging with Bison Smith, the last thing I remember. So um, I, I definitely think bringing in bigger guys cannot hurt, but I don't think a bigger guy could really work as a Ring of Honor world champion. Uh, but I think maybe if you put the TV title on, maybe a Rashi Brown type guy, or I think I don't think Brody Lee's. I think Brody Lee's just okay. Or if the Kings Wrestling split, and you put it on Claudio. I think that'd be great. Uh, probably Claudio's the only big, big guy that I could see. I mean, Morishima was kind of a big guy, but it was different because he's from Japan and he's a Noah guy. But uh, an American big uh, guy that's known for working in America, that's a big guy. Probably only Claudio's the guy that only only I could see holding the Ring of Honor World title. But big guys are definitely underutilized in the Indies for whatever reason. Because probably WWE snatches them all away pretty quickly. And so does TNA for, in uh, some sense. All right, first question from U.S. Hardy. What do you think of ROH adding a TV title? I think it's actually um, it's a good move. I, I think that a lot of fans wanted to see a secondary title for a long time. And the pure title, I think for the casual fans, would be a little too gimmicky for them to get. I mean, there's so many rules involved. I mean, the pure title was a very good title to build talent up. But I think hopefully they kind of create that with a TV title as well. Eddie Edwards is the first champion. And... I definitely like where that's helping him out. I mean, I, I don't think uh, some wrestlers really need the title. Like, a lot of people were complaining that D.B. Richards didn't win the tournament, but Eddie Edwards needs it more. I mean, Richards is already seen as a main eventer. Why does Richards need a secondary belt when he's already a main eventer? So, as long as they... the same, This serves the same purpose that the pure title used to. I'll have no problem with it. And, they put on, and the one thing the pure title really lacked was it really didn't have excellent matches because it was too gimmicky. So hopefully the TV talk can do that in the inaugural bout, which will be on HTNet this Monday. So I can't wait to see that, Richards versus Edwards. Again, from US, U.S. Hardy, how would you book Daniel Bryan in NXT if Engel or Benoit was his mentor if they still were in WWE? And that whole thing with Benoit didn't happen, or Engel for that matter, for WWE sense. Um, basically, I would have Engel or Benoit be a heel, Daniel Bryan as a face, and I'd have them just basically what the Miz is doing just mentoring and being an, basically an ass to Daniel Bryan maybe not the whole losing streak thing I'm not a huge fan of that because I mean to get completely over needs to get, get wins instead of just being like 0-8 wherever he is right now and doing American Gladiator rip off things but whatever um but I, I'd have them just kind of, I'd have Daniel Bryan win NXT and then just not have him face Angler Benoit and then just build up that match down the road maybe even like Survivor Series 2010 or a big pay-per-view match between the two maybe for like a United States title or something like that which probably they should do with The Miz and then have Brian win that match giving the finally the push over the edge getting them over getting the rub from Angle or Benoit those are two matches that I would absolutely love to see though um, but of course one of them is definitely not happening and the other one is very unlikely all right, the final question from U.S. Hardy. Have you ever been impressed by a botch? DT was invented by a botch uh, by Jake Roberts um... Not really impressed is not the right word, but made me kind of think. I mean, the only real example of where a botch really, I mean, and this is even stretching it at that, a botch really kind of even added to a match, and this is a complete stretch, and probably didn't even do that, is the Ladder War 1. If they had came up with that ending, like they had been really tired for like 15 seconds or 20 seconds, or not like a minute, minute and a half, that would have actually added to the match for me, but the ending was kind of weird. I mean, that, that match probably would have been one of my favorite matches in pro wrestling history. It probably might still be, because it was just so awesome to that point, but, you know, the Lightning and Ladder were more Briscoe and Generico were just reaching for the belts, and they probably, I don't know, they, they could have, if they had done that, it would have been a little better, but not really impressed by a botch ever. Sorry about that. And final question from XCQTE. Do you think that the sport of rugby could be financially viable as a professional sport in the United States as it is in the United Kingdom, France, or Australia? I don't think so. Um, that's kind of why we have hockey in this country, or in Canada as well, uh, because that's what kind of the America needs, a little high-paced high sport where there's a lot of, a little bit more violence, kind of like, 
Americans love football, and that's kind of a miniature version of football on ice, and it has a boxing element to it, too. All right, give me your thoughts, you guys. See you guys later.